this video, we'll discuss how to simplify by using the distributive property. The distributive property involves multiplication. You take the number that's right next to the parenthesis and multiply that number, so in this case negative 3, and multiply it to each, ter each term inside the parentheses. So we're going to have negative 3 times 2y. And since we're multiplying, we have to remember that a negative times a negative is a positive. And in this case, a negative times a positive term is a negative. So this will be negative, and then 3 times 2 is 6, and then we keep the y. And then we have a negative 3, and then we look in front. So this is a minus 6, so we look at it as a negative 6. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So we're going to put plus, and 3 times 6 is 18. And then that would be our final answer. We cannot put these together because one term has a y and the other term does not. They are not like terms. So when would we use the distributive property? If we had a problem like this, we wouldn't have to, but we could. So what do I mean by that? If you look at the difference between these two problems here, here there's a variable. In order of operations, parenthesis comes first. So we would do here the 2 plus the 4, which is 6, and then a 3 next to a parenthesis means multiply, and we would get 18. So we were able to do the parentheses first in this problem. However, in number 11, in our notes, we can't do the parentheses first because this term has a y and this doesn't. They aren't like terms, so we can't combine them like I could in this problem, which does not have any variables. However, instead of doing the parentheses first, since this is an addition problem here, I can use the distributive property when there's an addition or subtraction problem inside the parentheses. So we could do 3 times 2, which is 6, and then 3 times 4, which is positive 12, and we would also get 18. So that's why the distributive property works. So when would we use it? Whenever you can't do the parentheses first and you have a number in front of the parentheses. So let's go ahead and try that here. So here we have a negative 4 times m. In the previous video, we talked about that if a variable does not have a coefficient, a number in front, it's a 1. So we would do negative 4 times 1 is negative 4m. And then we would have negative 4 times 3. So a negative times a positive is a negative, and 4 times 3 is 12. And that would be our final answer. Notice the variable goes first, and notice the constant goes at the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So this one, we have a 4 next to a parenthesis, so it means multiply. So we have a 4 times a 2x. So this is one term. There's nothing splitting it apart like the problems above. Here, these were two separate terms because there was an addition or a subtraction separating. So this would just be 4 times 2x, which is 8x. So how do I know it is not equal to 4 times 2 is 8 and 4 times x is 4x? So how do I know not to separate it, that that is wrong? Well, if you plug in a random number, so for example, if I let x be, let's say, 5. So if I put 5 right here, so if I go back to the original problem, and I put a 5 in place of x, and this means multiply, 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times 4 is 40. That's exactly what we would get if I put a 5 for x here. 8 times 5 would be 40, and we would get the same value. So that's how I know 
that this would be wrong because 8x would get me the same value as the original problem. Okay, here we would have a negative 5 times 4x, so a negative times a positive is a negative. Then we would have a negative 5 times a negative 1y. A negative times a negative is a positive. 5 times 1 is 5. And then we would have a negative 5 times a negative 2. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and 5 times 2 is 10. So we have the x goes first in the alphabet, then y, and the constant last. So that would be our final answer. In the next problem here, we just have a negative symbol in front of the parentheses. Remember, a negative means opposite. It means you don't have something. So I would read this as the opposite of 2x minus 3. So what that's doing when you just have a, minus, or a negative symbol in front of the parentheses, instead of 2x, it's going to become negative 2x. And instead of a minus 3, it's going to become positive 3. So it just changes the signs from negative to positive inside the parentheses. So the answer is just negative 2x plus 3. Another way you can think about it is you could put a negative 1 out here, and then you could distribute and do negative 1 times 2x, which is negative 2x, and then a negative 1 times a negative 3 is positive 3. So either way you want to do it, put a negative 1 there, or just make everything inside the parentheses opposite whenever you have just a negative sitting outside of a parentheses. So now let's go ahead and combine the distributive property with combining like terms. So in the next problem here, we have the distributive property because we have parentheses and a number in front, and then we have like terms. So whenever in a math problem we don't know where to start, that's where we use PEMDAS. It helps us remember what to do first, second, third, fourth, etc. in a problem. So the first thing is parentheses or anything in grouping symbols. So in example 16, it does have parentheses, but you can't put these two together because they're not like terms. So we can't do parentheses. Then we don't have any exponents. So we have multiplication or division, whichever one's first on the left of the problem. So since this means multiply right here, we're not going to do 5 minus 3. Minus subtraction is at the end. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and distribute. So we're going to use the distributive property, and we're going to do negative 3 times 2x, which is negative 6x. And then we're going to do a negative 3 times a positive 4, which is negative 12. And then we will bring down the 5. And remember, there always has to be something in between the terms. And then we'll bring down the minus 8x. Then, after multiplication and division, then we add and subtract. So that means we can combine the like terms. So we could put a negative 6x and a negative 8x together. And again, we're adding or we're subtracting. When the signs are the same, so this is a negative and this is a negative, when they're the same, we add. So we would do 6 plus 8. And since 8 is larger, negative 14x. Then we can go ahead and combine the 5 with the negative 12. They are different. This one's positive. This one's negative. So we subtract. 12 minus 5 is 7. But since 12 is larger, we would put minus 7 here. All right, so next problem. First step is parentheses. We can't because we can't do 3x plus 4. So done with parentheses exponents would go next. So this is something we are actually going to learn how to do in the next chapter of this class. So we are actually not going to continue with this problem, but I wanted to show you that just because this 2 is in front of the parentheses, it does not mean we can automatically 
distribute here. Because in order of operations, exponents, distributing this exponent, which we, we have not learned how to do 3x plus 4 squared. That's, again, in next chapter. So we're just going to leave it as it is right now. So we'll go ahead and skip that one, and we'll do something similar next chapter. All right, example 18. We're going to go ahead and distribute here. So we'd have 8 times 3 is 24. And then we'd have 8 times negative 7b. And then here, in front of this parenthesis, is a negative 4. So we need to distribute a negative 4 times 2b is negative 8b. And then a negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So now that we've distributed, now we can combine the like terms. So we have a negative 56b and a negative 8b. They're both the same. So we're going to add 56 plus 8 is 64. Since 56 is larger, we look in front. That's how we know it's a negative 64b. And then we can go ahead and combine 24 and negative 12. They're different, so we subtract. 24 minus 12 is 12. And since 24 is larger and it's positive, that's how come we know to put a plus there. Okay, here, even though it's very tempting to do 2 plus 5, which is 7, in order of operations, so PEMDAS, adding is at the end. So since we can't do parentheses, there's no exponents, that's how I know to use the distri distributive property. So we're going to do 5 times 2y, which is 10y, and then 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And now that 2 is not being distributed, so we bring it down, this 2 right here. And since this was a positive 10y, we're going to put a plus. There always needs to be something in between terms. And then over here, there's parentheses. So we're going to distribute. And when there's just a minus sign or a negative in front of the parentheses, remember, it gets distributed. And the 7y is going to become negative 7y. And the negative 2 or the minus 2 is going to become plus 2. So it just makes everything inside the parentheses, the 7y minus 2, the opposite. OK, now we can combine the like terms. So a 10y with a negative 7y, they're different, so we're subtracting 10 minus 7 is 3y, and 10 is bigger, so that's how we know it's positive. And then we can combine here, we have a 2, a negative 15, and a 2 here. So I'm going to go ahead and put 2 plus 2 is 4. And then a negative 15, those are different. This is a positive 4 and this is a negative. They're different. So we're subtracting 15 minus 4. And we get 11. Since 15 is larger, that's how we know it's going to be a minus 11. OK, so I would like for you to go ahead and pause the video and try the following six problems and then push play and check with my answers. If you do not get the same answers, make sure to come see me for help. So please pause the video. So here are the answers. Check them over now that you are done with yours. I do want to mention here that when you combine, for example, negative 6 with positive 7, those would subtract and make positive 1b squared. So while I will accept 1b squared right now, that's not the most simplest form because 1 times anything is itself. So this is the best answer. You wouldn't see this in a textbook or on an answer key. Well, it's the same thing. It's just this looks more simpler. We know there's a 1 there, so we don't need to write it. Same thing over here with the y. We don't need to put a negative 1y. We know it's there.
It's not wrong if we put it, it's just not a simple, simplest form.